there are potential risks to flagpoling. An officer can deny you re-entry into Canada. If you already applied online, they can simply tell you to go home and wait until your application is processed by IRCC. Flag polling is the act by a foreign national with temporary status in Canada who goes into the U.S. and immediately returns to Canada for the purpose of an immigration service. Flag polling is usually done by international students, temporary foreign workers, or visitors. Hi, welcome back to Through Nikki's Lens. I am Nikki. I want to share with you my experience of applying for my post-graduation work permit at the border as well as my second experience with my family to extend my husband's work permit, his open work permit, and my son's visitor record. Back in 2021, July of 2021, I went to one of the borders to apply for my post-graduation work permit. At that time though, it was required for persons entering into Canada to be vaccinated fully vaccinated. I only had one shot of my COVID-19 vaccine, so that was that posed a challenge for me when I was supposed to come back into Canada. At the border that I went to, the Point Roberts Boundary Bay border, it is a small border, so we didn't technically have to drive to go into the US per se. All I had to do was to walk around the building. Upon going around the building as a pedestrian, I had to interact with a Canada Border Service Agency officer. That officer asked me a few questions, and from what I can remember, he wanted to know why I was there. So I told him that I wanted to apply for my post-graduation work permit. As I mentioned earlier, at the time coming into Canada, you had to be fully vaccinated. Persons entering Canada also had to have the Arrive Can app. And because I only had one vaccination, I was not able to enter the information successfully into the app. Because I did not successfully complete the ArriveCan app, he was questioning why I was at the border. So what he said to me is because I was not fully vaccinated, I was the last person to be at the border. But that aside, when he directed me inside of the building to talk to another CBSA officer, he was a little bit more pleasant and explained that because I was not fully vaccinated, I had to go into quarantine for 14 days. I was extremely nervous all throughout that process because of the advice that I was given many times before to not go to the border to flag pole because you're putting yourself at certain risks that you might not face if you do your PGWP application or apply for a work permit, an open work permit. So to go back to my story, I had to quarantine for 14 days at home and it was the longest 14 days of my life. Honestly, I felt a little bit depressed because I was wondering if my PGWP application would be approved. Although you are eligible for a post-graduation work permit, it is at the discretion of the officer processing your application to determine if you met all the requirements to get that PGWP application and to get that approval. And for sure, you have to have done well in your studies and to get that letter to say that you have successfully completed your studies. That means that if you didn't get your letter of completion, you're not able to apply for your post-graduation work permit. And it is really important for all students coming to Canada to do well in their program so that they can get that letter of completion and to say that they have successfully completed their degree. You might be wondering what are some of the documents that you need to apply for a post-graduation work permit. Most importantly, if you're going to the border, you need your passport, your valid passport. You also need to have your study permit. If it is that your study permit has expired, then there might be some issues. But I've heard stories that persons have gone to the border with an expired study permit and still got their PGWP application approved. Another document that you need to ensure that you have when you go to the border, for sure, 
is your letter of completion and your transcript. It is important to highlight also that it is best for you to take your official transcript to the border to get that application done. And that official transcript should be in a sealed envelope from the institution. So please do not open that document. There are some students that put extra effort if it is that they took a term break from school to prove that this term break was actually approved, especially in an instance where your school does not have a designated break for students. So if you got a term break approved from school and that is the only time that you should take a term break off from school, unless it's a leave of absence for a medical reason or for any reason that the school accepts as applicable. If you can get a document from your school to show that you took an approved break, take that along with you. If you want to remove that condition from your work permit, that is automatic if you have not done a medical to show that you are in good health and fit and in good condition, then you need to get a medical done from an approved panel physician from the IRCC's website. Once you pass the necessary exams and show that you're fit and healthy, they will remove the conditions that basically states that you cannot work in healthcare, you cannot work with children and other vulnerable population. There are certain risks or disadvantages to flag polling. One, there is a risk of being refused re-entry into Canada if there are problems with the status of the individual that decides to flag poll. Two, there is unpredictability that the process of flag polling will be favorable due to the fact that the processing of an application as well as the approval of an application at the border is at the discretion of the officer. Three, inconveniences. There are different processing or wait times at the border depending on the number of applicants that are processing their applications at the time, as well as the fact that some persons live far away from the border and they have to travel a far distance. If you're taking your family with you to the border to extend their permits, then there are some additional documents that you will need. If you have a spouse with you that was currently on a work permit, and you want to extend or they didn't have their work permit before, the recommended documents that you need to take with you is a job letter. As someone that is applying to get your PGWP or you have already gotten your PGWP approved and you're going to the border with your family, including your spouse, it is recommended that you have a job letter to show that you have a skilled job. And under normal circumstances, a skilled job is necessary to extend your spouse's open work permit. Along with that document to show that you're employed, that letter from your employer, or you have a job offer for a skilled job, you need three recent pay stubs. With your spouse, you need to take with you your marriage certificate. And if you want to extend your child's study permit, depending on their age or their visitor record, you need to ensure that you take their birth certificate with you to prove that you are actually their parent. Bear in mind that the validity of their permits is tied to the validity of your permit. So for example, if you studied a two years program and you're eligible for a three years post-graduation work permit, your family will be able to stay with you in Canada until the expiration of your permit as well. There are instances where they will get a shorter validity and this is generally in the case where their passports will be expired before the validity of your PGWP. So if you are finding value in the information that I'm sharing so far, please like my video, share with a friend. If it is that you have any questions, comments or concerns, please feel free to share them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. The second time that I had to go to the border to do flag pole was with my family. By that time, we had already submitted our application for permanent residency, but it was not processed yet. Their permits were expiring, so I took the necessary documentations I listed before to ensure that we got their permits extended. It was a pretty, pretty awesome experience at that time. We went to another border, the Peace Arch border. That was a way bigger border from the Point Roberts Boundary Bay one. 
and at that time we actually drove through the border when we actually got to the the officer at the border they did the usual questioning to find out what country you're from if you have a visa to go into the US and we just told them no because at the time we didn't so they directed us where we needed to go they didn't ask a lot of questions and we were directed to the US office in that office we had to join a line and we went up to a US border officer he asked us some simple questions why we were here we explained that we applied online and it was I guess five i believe five months because we applied in january and this was in may when we went to the border because the date that we got to say that my husband was able to work until that date passed and we still didn't get any feedback on the application so we decided to do the flagpole and to try and apply for a refund for the applications that we did i must say it is now september and we have still not gotten that refund from IRCC. So bear in mind that that is something that you may lose if you choose to go to do a flagpole after you have applied online. So after we talked with the US officer, he asked us a few questions. I don't remember all of them right now. And he was pretty nice because he ended up giving my son one of the badges that they wear on their sleeves. They directed us how to get back to the Canadian side of the border. And we also had to go back through the, the poll booth, look in barriers and talk to an officer at that border to say why you're coming into Canada. While at that section, we explained to the officers that we're here to do where we were there to extend my husband's work permit and my son's visitor record. He seemed as if he was not pleased because we had to disclose that we applied online. And please do not withhold this information because they know. So we explained that we applied online and it, was, it took too long. The date they told us he could work until a decision was made passed and we still didn't hear back anything. He seemed pretty annoyed and said that we need to go home and wait. But it looked as if he didn't have any valid reason to turn us back. So he eventually directed us where to go to the building to talk to the CBSA officers. When we went inside, they asked us what we, we were there to do. So we explained the same thing, extend our, my husband's work permit and to extend my son's visitor record. We said we applied online and we haven't heard back. They took the documents. You, got, you would get a slip from the officer at the Canadian border that questions you to say what you're doing and to direct you accordingly. We handed over that slip to them and all the documentations that we had. I had my study permit with me that was still not expired. I had my PGWP with me as well as my marriage certificate, my son's birth certificate, the letter from my employer stating that I'm employed and the last three pay stubs. It's not the last three months pay stub, so keep that in mind. And that's something that wasn't clear on IRCC's website. So if you get paid bi-weekly, you need one month plus two weeks for the, the pay stubs that you need to show that you're employed in a job that is skilled and you're getting paid. They asked us to sit and in less than 30 minutes, we got the documents. So they called us again and say, okay, here are your documents, go and make the necessary payments. And that was it. So it's a simple process. It can go quickly. It can take long, depending on the number of people that they have processing and also maybe the time of the day. So if you're going to a border, you need to do your checks online to see what processes they do at that particular border because there are some that might not do the visitor record extension and you need to be sure that they do process the PGWP or an open work permit application. So once you do all your checks, you go to the border. Sometimes, depending on the number of people that they are dealing with on that day, they will give you an appointment to come back. So in a nutshell, that was my experiences applying for my PGWP at the border, applying for my husband's work permit extension at the border, and my son's visitor record. Again, the process can be very seamless, not challenging at all, but there are instances where people might not have met all the requirements as a student, 
and they get rejected. The officer might tell them, okay, we're issuing a removal order. You have until X time to leave Canada. And I think in most cases, that is not what happens. But just bear in mind that you have to be ready to answer any questions that the immigration officers might have and just have all your doc the necessary documents that you need to ensure that your application is approved. Take with you adequate funds for the different applications that you're doing at the border. And all the very best for you.